Hey, uh, welcome back. This course is going to be on optimizing Facebook ad elements. Uh, if you remember from our fundamentals of Facebook ads, our elements consist of the headline, the ad text, the final landing page URLs, the display link, um, the link description, and the call to action. <clears throat> so let's look at this real quick. Uh, right now we are running one headline which is this right here this free ebook the freedom mission how to go from solo business owner to entrepreneur and we're running three uh, total ad text here which are you know these three right here and currently we're running this on one landing page which is the original uh, and in, in our uh, landing page, multiple URLs, optimizing Facebook ad campaigns, <clears throat> we were using multiple uh, uh, URLs in that case. We're using, I think, five, four or five of them uh, to see which of those landing pages is going to lead to better conversions, which is everything. And we are now using this ad campaign, uh, which is using some new images that's been running for about a day now, I think. Uh, to find out kind of what's working and with what you know which audience whether it's on the Instagram channel or it's on Facebook and for this one we decided to go ahead and we're keeping our audience from 30 to 44 we're still targeting males in the United States uh, we're now instead of targeting the interests we're now targeting on demographics and behaviors which the demographics we're looking for, any, you know, income levels of 75,000 up to over half a million. Uh, we're looking primarily uh, for people in the behaviors uh, section, which is going to be people that have purchased or subscribed to either business marketing or higher education type courses. Um, so this has opened up a, a market for us that is uh, from the other audience that we've been running, which was really tight of less than 200,000 people. This one's opened it up to about 1.7 million. So we have potentially a lot of room to scale with this. Obviously, our top uh, funnel campaigns are focused on uh, really what's the cost per conversion. And in order to be able to get to that, um, you know, we're looking to um, to find which of these audiences and you know networks and are going to work best. So we're really focused on the mobile audience and Instagram here. Um, uh, once again, you know, these have always been kind of solid performing audiences uh, for, uh, well, it depends on the business model. Uh, obviously, you know, like B2B stuff is going to probably perform better on desktop feed or right column. Uh, also mobile. Um, you know, I'm not too sure about Instagram on that case, but really for what we're doing here, we're trying to drive people to subscribe to Entrepreneur's Life, which is to teach them how to grow their business and scale it. So these are the ads that we're running right now um, with these different variables, uh, these different elements right here in the headline, the ad text, and in the images. These are our variables right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and let's look at all the ads that are running. Let me show you how I've got them broken down. <clears throat> I've got them broken down based on their age, which on this campaign is 39 through 41. Uh, focused on higher education, uh, which is one of the two audiences that we're testing on in behaviors and running on the Instagram channel. You can see here again, 39 to 41, but we're running on the business marketing audience that we have selected and on the mobile audience and the mobile channel. So these, these, you know, these are changed. We're looking at, you know, which of these are going to be our best performers we have within each of these um, ad sets we have multiple ads that are running and out of these you know we're going to see which combination of the headline image and ad text is going to give us the best performance not only on which placement we use like Instagram in this case or mobile but also within the age groups that we have defined you know every two years um, <clears throat> and how we went about this you know we obviously you know initially you're, you're casting a wider net and then you start circling in and sort of dialing in for the age groups. We found that, you know, running for, say, 22 through 55, we found that 
the 30 to 44 age group was where kind of where we're, our sweet spot for these campaigns are. And we're looking now to further dial them in. And this is one of those campaigns that we're doing that on. So these are all of the ads that are running on these different channels within these different age groups. <clears throat> you can see that there's a lot um, you know, that's going on. And that's kind of one, I, that's one great thing about using Espresso to show you. It's a lot easier to, to, to read the data and see these things over uh, just using the Facebook uh, business manager. So anyhow, point is that we've got a lot running here. These are the impressions, and obviously you can see that we've had very few. Um, you know, the most we've had 150 or so impressions on, on one of these little networks. We've had two clicks here. I mean, that's great, but such, such small numbers, it gives us very little data to be able to work with. <clears throat> I think that what we can do is we can probably go ahead and make some judgment calls on image um, and, and, and maybe some ad text here. So I really hate going so early, um, but you know, what we have to keep in mind is that, you know, these, it can show us some values. And certainly the, the value that we're looking for most here is the conversion value. Now with this ad campaign, uh, we got some issues going on. Um, some have to deal with the business owners team of developers that are um, on a 12 hour difference window than we are. So uh, we're having some problems with the pixel firing off. Uh, we do have leads coming into the campaign, but we're not rendering which uh, are showing. However, <clears throat> we can go ahead and look here and make some, some, some assumptions. I mean, we've already got over a thousand impressions, which I would say a thousand is going to be our minimum threshold. Um, and we can see that this campaign, uh, you know, the second image based on the click through rate of 1.273%, which is greater than the first images, 0.897%, as well as the cost per click on the first image is uh, eight, you know, 84 cents versus 63 cents. So <clears throat> though this is early, though our clicks are very small, we can make some, some, some pretty, you know, uh, good judgment calls to say, hey, this image is absolutely outperforming the first image. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pause out that. So that way that we have all of our ad budget is now dedicated to these 60 ads that are running with this image that also is going to have in addition to it these other variables so let's go ahead and let's look and let's see if we can make any decisions here um, <clears throat> on the ad text side we can see that the first you know we've got three ad texts here one two and three we can see that the first one has had a pretty, you know, decent amount of impressions of 595, uh, you know, which is, you know, close to the 817 and, you know, it's still pretty far off from the 1405 total in the second one. But we can see that this campaign, <clears throat> it's got the least amount of, you know, it's got the, the lowest click-through rate out of the three click-through rates here. And it's also got the highest CPC. Um, certainly two clicks, you know, out of just a small amount of impressions, you know, it's hard to make the judgment call, but we can clearly see that these other two campaigns are running much better. So let's go ahead and let's pause out this first one. Uh, that way we have these two on the second end here now competing. And what we have now is, uh, you know, we're looking at um, having these two ads kind of compete for one another because if you really look at it, uh, from my perspective, I would rather give up a little bit of the click through right here for a better cost per click which is almost half so almost half a cost you know on the cost per click side i would almost give up to, to run this 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 ad text right here over this one so this will be a judgment call in the next rounds of optimization that we'll make but the, this is certainly kind of what i'm looking at on the value side and this has got some more impressions to catch up on to kind of you know give me a good you know score which of these two are working but we know that for, for a fact that this first one's not working let's go ahead and look at the ages real quick um you know and and here's what's difficult about making some of the decisions right now is because we don't have the tracking pixel installed to get our conversion value we're not able to say hey um you know you know all of, let's say that let's say that the 39 to 41 age group had three clicks on it had a very low click-through rate had a 
pretty high cost per click just because it's a small amount. But let's say it had three conversions, 100% conversion rate. Well, in this case, and let's say we had zero on the rest of them. In this case, we don't really, I mean, we would be stupid to take this off just because of our initial analysis of, you know, hey, this is just not performing as well, it's a little bit more expensive. True, but we don't know what our conversion rate, and our conversion rate, or CPA here, is really everything because we want to focus on that and that's really the whole purpose of the top of the funnel ad sets is to in combination with your landing page is to be able to get a better conversion rate at a you know and, and target the audience that the message speaks best with so we still have a little bit more running to do with these we're going to let these age groups run so that we can get some more value and hopefully we can get the uh, pixel firing on this end so i can go ahead and register and start being able to dial this in for CPA performance because we are at that level now. Um, whereas, you know, the prior week that we've been running these, we've been really focused on the click through rates, cost per clicks, and driving that down. And now that we've got leads that are coming through already, you know, that need to be registered here, now we, we can start looking at the lead conversion ratios and getting that dialed in. Um, let's look at this real quick. Let's go ahead and finish this out. Um, we can see that you know, the business marketing uh, purchase behavior section has got a better click-through rate of one point, almost, you know, 1.379%. But the cost per click is, you know, at, at, at 90 cents a click, whereas on the higher education, on the other uh, uh, products that we're looking for people purchasing, you know, it's resulting in more impressions, more clicks, resulted in a lower click-through rate, but we're also getting it at a better cost per click. Now, again, here, before we make decisions on where we're going to cut, we need to have the conversion values because we're at that stage now where these numbers have to start coming in. And for this campaign, I would expect to have things done by the next couple of hours so that they register. So at this point, we know that the leads are coming in, but we don't know which of these two are going to be the best performers once we have that lead conversion values there. Uh, again, um, <clears throat> uh, we can look at, go ahead and say that lo looking at the, the two different placement channels, Instagram and the mobile network, uh, we got three clicks on Instagram, spent quite a bit, you know, at a high CPC of 371 with a very low click through rate. Uh, we can view here on the mobile side, we're getting great clicks great, uh, well not great, but better than 1%, you know, click through rate, which is, you know, great. Once you get up to 2%, that's better or higher. 4%, 5% is great. And a cost per click, which is great, you know, of less than 40 cents. So here we can go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and pause out the Instagram placement channel on this because this is just the not right, this is just not the right audience uh, for us on this campaign. It's not saying we wouldn't run it again later, but for the campaigns that we've been running for the past week, I know that the mobile audience has been the best uh, on all campaigns so far. So by limiting this, we've now taken out quite a bit of an ad spend here, which we don't have the conversion rates, you know, and once again, we could have had three clicks and three conversions here. However, you know, that is a little bit high for me and, and I'm not going to bet on hundred percent conversion value because that just doesn't happen. So. More than likely, what we're going to be focused on is mobile uh, network running, and that's once again I'm making that final decision based off of you know historical data that's run for at least you know uh, you know a couple thousand impressions. So that's fine to make here. Um, you know that really is kind of all the things we're going to dial at this point. Obviously, we're going to want to take our ads, which we started off with this many, and let's go ahead and, and look at it now. We've, we started off with six in each of these categories or these ad set placements and what we've done now is we've reduced them down <clears throat> we've reduced them down to these final ad sets here so we've got two in each of the categories that we're running on just the mobile network placement channel instead of mobile and Instagram so now we're going to be able to vote. As you see, we've really pared down a lot of our ads that have been running to begin with down to these main ones that we do see some um, traction on. Obviously still we're very small, but now we're letting our ad budget focus on these ads. And then within each of these categories or each of these ad sets, we're going to be looking at, hey, which of these two ads is performing best here? 
and we're going to have to let, you know, obviously the impressions get caught up and let them run. So when we start getting to, to you know, to this point, it, we'll, we'll start looking at the click-through rates and the cost, and this is where we can, once again, bring down our starting, you know, CPC, which on this, and starting CTR, which is click-through rate, which is going to be high in my opinion. Let's go ahead and look at it here. We're going to be able to reduce it quite a bit. Uh, so let's look at the only day of data, which was yesterday. We had a clip to rate of 1.059%. Uh, and right now, or yesterday, we had a cost per click or CPC of 0 0.615. So 61, 62 cents. Um, today, you can look at the aggregate score here and it's showing it at 74 cents, which is fine. Um, we just did a round of optimizations, which we took out a lot of the, you know, underperforming placements, underperforming ads, images, etc. cetera. Um, so we, we've done a lot that's, that's gonna reflect, you know, as we let this run again for 24 more hours. And, and uh, here on this campaign, um, you know, by reducing the budget on this, it's reduced, you know, and we've taken a little bit out of the budget. It was at 20, now we dropped it down to a total of 10, and that's fine because we've got multiple other campaigns that are running, which also include running multiple URLs, um, We've got different audiences that we're running on. So this campaign right here, in this video asset, we focused on uh, dialing in the different ad elements, which we use for this, a, a very simple tool that allows us to see the different elements which are listed here, to be able to find which one of, the, uh, which one of these are the best performers. Right now, on each of those that we saw, we have these two different ad texts that are that are only variables within each of the ad uh, sets age groups. So as we continue to see which, you know, our next step is to find out which of these two ad texts is going to perform best. And, you know, we've got to get some clicks and some time on it. So I would say 24, 36, 48 hours, uh, you know, come back to it and then perform another round of optimization and then start tuning in for the age groups. So as we continue to parry down, we'll end up with usually just one, you know, one or two or three age groups that we're dialed in for with one headline, one ad text, one image, one call to action, and one URL. And from that, that's how we were able to dial in. And then, you know, obviously if it's a losing campaign, if it's not converting, um, you know, we drop it and go with the ones that are. So we know that we're converting Unfortunately for this campaign, uh, we had some hiccups with it being on a custom software development platform where we're not able to get the pixel firing just yet. Uh, we expect to have that up in the next 24 hours. But in the meantime, we've really focused on the click-through rates, cost of the clicks, uh, to drive down which of the ad elements that we want to perform on this. And from that, we're going to uh, further parry it down and continue to improve. We're going to find which of these final Ad text works the best. My guess, probably, you know, it's, it's, well, it's going to be one of these two. We don't know yet. We got to have time and let the data. I don't want to work jack. So, <clears throat> I would say that you know, from the results, we would take this. And so let's say this one is the winner, or let's say this one is. We would take this, and then we would wordsmith this this whole. Um, paragraph out again and, and try it with another variation on the same audience or different audience, so on and so forth. And you keep doing that over and over again until you, you get campaigns that are winning, that are producing, that are hitting the conversion values that we want to hit, which in this case, I would say, you know, we want to convert certainly over 30% uh, conversion values is what we should be registering here on this end for our top tier campaigns to even be considered. Now, once you do hit 30%, how do you make it better? And that's a combination of two things. One is a combination of, of continually to, to wordsmith out your best performing ad text, headlines, images, etc., testing audiences, and it also has to go back to your landing pages. So your landing pages here really are definitive in a way in, it, they, in how they define your overall conversion value of these campaigns. So, you can dial an ad campaign on the Facebook side and as much as you want, but if you have a lousy performing landing page that converts low, there's nothing that you're going to be able to do on the Facebook side to improve that. Now, that's why in, in this course, I'm focusing on the three components of hacking your conversions because you have to look at it as working in tandem. 
your Facebook ads, with your landing pages, with your emails. All of these is what's going to drive a sales funnel. So <clears throat> when we look at the top of the funnel, the idea is to take all these elements and keep paring them down, keep testing new things. You can't be afraid of that. Um, and where people mess up and where people get, you know, clients especially, they'll get, they'll, 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 they'll sit there and watch it by the hour. You know, they're watching, you know, click for click. They're, you know, if everybody's coming in, they're watching it. And so, you know, the freedom that I get, I, I don't do that anymore. I mean, I'm, I'm going back and I'm reviewing it systematically, you know, 24, 48 hours, depending on the ad spin. And I'm making my calls and I'm making adjustments and, 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 and progressing them through the same process that we're doing on this course, which is how do we find winners? And then when we get those winners, how do we take them and make them, you know, monetize them through the, the middle and the bottom of the funnel? So for now, let's look at, you know, uh, you know, really for, for this, for, for this course and this video, let's look at how you can, you know, let's, let's go ahead and have you build out campaigns and use this to make your decisions just like I did by reading the data on which you're going to pare down your campaigns. Now, you can use a software like Adespresso. Uh, you know, really, there's no reason not to use tools like this because, in my opinion, it just really reduces the amount of time that it takes to do all this. And the quicker you get through this process, the quicker you get through putting out a couple thousand ads, and, and testing them on, you know, with all of our elements through the ads, you know, through the landing pages, through uh, audiences, <clears throat> is really how we find, you know, our winners. And it takes time, and it's going to take some money, and you know, so really, your first 500 to 1,000 ad budget on the low end is going to be devoted to just getting some answers. And and, and once again, yes, this campaign is producing conversions. Unfortunately, I'm not able to register to here, but they're still low and, 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 you know, by the time that we do get to a point where I need to have them registered, you know, that's when we're going to be looking at which of our elements on all fronts are working. So we're still going through the testing process, which you should be too now. And really this course, which you should take away and as well as the, uh, the other courses on optimizing different ways on the top funnel, you, you need to take these and practice them and not be afraid to put campaigns out that are not going to be necessarily winners because they're not all winners. And uh, the only way that you know that you're winning is when you're beating your worst performance. And if you're always looking to beat your worst, you, you can do better. And I think that's kind of what you're looking at, you know, uh, from a digital marketer standpoint of how I look at it is it, it's almost a game. I'm just looking to... I'm putting all the elements together, I'm, form, I'm putting my, my essential recipe together, and now I'm looking at which combinations of the ingredients in that recipe can I change to make it more flavor, a more flavorful cake, so to speak. So the same thing is applied here, and we're, we're taking it, we're breaking it out. Now, a lot of times you say, well, you know, if you start off with, you know, understanding, you know, your audience personas, you start off with, you know, understanding, you know, the pain points and being able to give them messages that directly correlate to those and give them solutions, then you should be able to do better to begin with. Yes. And and that's why we do focus, you know, in the initial stages of putting these things together on, you know, coming up with stuff, stuff that's in the industry and knowing how the industry performs. And, you know, if you have an audience, which if you don't have an audience, you know, you know, and a lot of products don't, it's, no matter what you do, it's not going to work well. So for this takeaway that, in order to optimize, you're reading the data. You're reading what's costing, what, what, you know, what's your click-through rates, your CTRs, and your CPCs. From that, you're then making decisions to keep and cut ad sets that we've built out. And once again, using software like this, like Ad Espresso, it just makes it easier and quicker uh, to, to put it out. And it's, it's very easy to read the data coming off of it. So that's one reason why you can use it, uh, you know, uh, you don't have to. You can certainly go and, and go in your business uh, manager and create these, and you know, you know, segregate out the different folders and do your duplication processes and and do all that fun stuff. And and but you know, it's a matter of time versus you know, uh, the output. So again, when we're building these, and now we're going through and we're optimizing them. It's a quick process, and, and you can even use you know automatic settings. You can even write rules and algorithms, which we can get into later, and it's fun. But for now, you know, 
what we're doing is we're just taking what our audience is giving back to us in terms of clicks and impressions and, and, and we're looking at the rates at which they're doing it to make decisions on, hey, I'm going to keep this, I'm going to eliminate this element and then keep testing further down. So you pair your ads from say 200 down to the best performing five or even one. Uh, and it doesn't have to be any specific number necessarily. But you, you will find that, you know, as you go along, you will, you know, especially when you gather more data, more clicks, more impressions, you'll see things that, you know, you know you, you'll see things, you know, smooth out in terms of, of the cost side and, 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 and how you can predict how it's going to work moving forward. So for now, on the top of the funnel, let's finish the session by saying that, you know, we use the data to make decisions to eliminate the elements that we've written for our ad sets. And now we're, we're using our audience response in order to find which ones work best. So if you haven't already made campaigns, go ahead and you know, follow along with Building them Out and use this uh, video, use this uh, as well as the others as a reference tool and point to, so you can go back and say, hey, this is how he did it, and so will I. So you wanna look at sorting off with a lot, throwing it at the wall, see what sticks. When you get something that sticks, make it better. Never stop making it better, and that will lead to success.